Hey, Spuddies, Potemic Whiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Europa Universalis 4 as Yemen. I think we're off to a pretty good little start here. We are going up to speed 4 here in the peacetime. We do have a mission to recover our manpower, and that's going to be kind of what we do for a little bit of time. We're going to sit on speed 4, kind of just build up a little bit. We do have a tech advantage that we would like to press and use against our neighbors, but uh, we may not bother with that. I'm going to start building a spy network with this guy because I want to get claims on all his territory. I want to kind of seal him out. I was going to turn him into a vassal, but I think I will turn... Um, I think he's too big for me right now. And he is my primary culture, so that's something I need to keep in mind. I think I might... Um, yeah, I think I'll... He's my primary culture, so I think it makes sense for me to to take that. Eventually when I expand this vassal out, what I will do is I'll take these two provinces or something and I'll kind of just like steal provinces from this vassal over time. But this vassal mainly exists uh, to take advantage of the Ikta government type here where I get extra ducats for my vassals. Because I don't plan on taking these other ones. I mean the, the manpower is quite nice actually. I mean it's, it's pretty damn decent. 600 manpower. It's like 10% of my current manpower. Uh, I think I have a fort. I think I can only really afford one fort. Do I need the army tradition, though? It is a decent little bit of morale of armies, but if I turned that off, I could get an advisor. Is, is there, like, a particularly good advisor right now? The yearly prestige one would be actually amazing because it would give me admin. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn this off. And then I can afford, I can just barely afford an advisor. Now, I am going to keep drilling my army though. Because I think a drilled army is absolutely worthwhile. Army professionalism is so good, in my opinion. You, you take more damage, or so you deal more damage with army professionalism. But you also unlock new abilities like refilling garrisons and conscription armies and stuff like that. Okay, let's see here. Ooh, I would like the 10 prestige. But the 10%, but the 60% local tax modifier is brutal. Yeah, I think I'm going to take uh, hampered growth. How are you doing? You're doing okay. So I think you unlock the study technology... Yeah, at tech level 9. So that's kind of something we want to focus on getting as well. We don't want to fall behind in Diplo tech. Uh, okay, I will lose the prestige here. Because we we are we are increasing our prestige yearly. So I don't mind losing prestige. Okay, you have a free advisor slot. Yep, yep I do. I would love to fill it in, but it's not really an option right now. Unfortunately, unfortunately my... My leader is a bit terrible. He did get plus one yearly legitimacy, which is actually really helpful. Um, could I do the interaction here? Raise additional levies. That would cut a few years off this growth. I might do that instead of demanding military support. Demanding military support is nice, um, but I'm already ahead of time in this tech. Ah, the Iberian wedding just fired. So we're kind of in a precarious situation. How are you doing, Rashid? Are you still uh, are you still paying off your debts? Yeah, they're still paying off their debts. How much debt do they have? Yeah. So these guys are still paying off their debts, so it's good that I'm letting them do their own thing as well. They are loyal now because I've improved my relation with them. And their trust with me should be increasing over time. If I go check... Yeah, they're up to 28. So I think that goes up by a certain number every year. They owe us five favors, but they're my vassal, so I don't know what to say about that. Yeah, look at that. That's a nice bit of ducats we're getting out of them. Yeah, I'll keep sparing no expense. The extra points here is very nice. Okay, we do have a 10% discount and a 10% penalty, so that should come out to be just about right. So we'll take that. We can build a mosque. And do I want to build a mosque? It does represent a fairly large chunk of income. If I were to build this here... What about... 
production buildings. Hmm. It is expensive. Would I get more value out of ships? Oh, these guys should be protecting trade. What, a six ships? Would increase it just a little bit. Oh, you know what? I'm going to be transferring from here. I think it might be better if I, uh, if I protected trade over here and moved it this way. Right? Maybe? What if you protect the trade? Oh, I don't have the range for that. No. Protect trade there. So I don't think I don't think these ships are worth it. Um, worthwhile for me to, to boost and, and get them. So I think what I might do instead is I may throw down a mosque here. If I throw it in my cap, it won't it takes many years to pay off. But it does mean that I can do more later. Ah, so we had enough, but then the month ticked over and we didn't have enough because the price went up from institutions, penalty tech. Okay, so I think... I think we want to continue moving towards mysticism here to increase our missionary strength. So I'll take... Oh, legitimacy. Yeah, I'll take the legitimacy. That'll give me an extra little bit of missionary strength, which will help me get through these guys that little bit quicker. To get my religious unity up. Religious unity is kind of like my big thing right now. So let's have a look here. Uh, Upper Yemen area gets construction costs. Is this Upper Yemen? If I cancel this, will I get my full money back? Damn it. Oh, this is Upper Yemen. Never mind. Um, this will give me state maintenance, local construction cost, and local unrest. In Upper Yemen. You know what? I'm okay with that. Or yearly prestige. Now I'll take the. Uh, I'll take that. Okay, let's take the marketplace. It'll give me a bit of trade range. I don't know if that really makes a huge difference for me. But we have a merchant now pushing this way. How much are we pushing? Uh, Yemen is increasing outgoing value by one plus. We're pulling a little bit this way. How much trade power do we have here? There's Yemen. England somehow has is listed in this node for some godforsaken reason. Byzantium as well? Why are they, what? 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 <laughs> what? Where's my trade power? Where am I? Yemen. So we have plus two. And this transfers from the traders downstream. So I think because my trade power here is like pulling more trade power this way or something. The trade system is alien to me. I have no idea how it honestly works. I've looked up so many different ways. It's like, oh yeah, it works like this and this happens. I'm, you know, every time I look it up, I'm just kind of left more confused. Now would be a good time to actually build a building in here. But we have we have years before we need to make that decision. And that would leave us kind of bankrupt. But yeah, I think building a building here uh, definitely makes sense because it will, you know, it'll, it'll make my per province... Um, power of my empire better and actually if I were to invest here in another base tax this would be multiplied by 40% so that would be even be even be better I think so what are you getting here you're getting 35% modifier whereas my capital has some negative modifiers due to uh, intolerance but uh, we'll uh, we'll figure all that out later Trade power could be good too. That would like help long-term trade income. Yeah, I'm really just trying to boost my income here as I wait for my manpower to recover. I'm torn between taking the um, additional levies here and the demanding military support. I think I want to do one or the other right around when this starts getting to where it's um 
where they're about to lose loyalty. I think that sort of optimizes things a little bit for me if I do that. So for some reason I'm transferring trade power to Alexandria. I don't know why, but I'm doing it. You know, what can I say? So, who's my next big target? I think I think it's these guys. So who are you guys allied with? Oh. Ah, see that's awkward for me. You allied to my enemies. Are you allied to my allies? What would happen if I declared war on you? Who are you allied with? You're allied with Hormuz. Just Hormuz, so... Actually... I could do some damage to you. Hejaz is a vassal of the Mamluks. So I can't really fight them. So I think Dwasir is really my only target. So I'm pretty sure I can fabricate on behalf of my vassals. So I'll tell you what I will do. Just for the sake of this, I'll fabricate claims on this guy. Just so that I have them. But well, then we're going to switch this diplomat over to... Uh, to do us here and start fabricating on them. So that we can start maybe eating them for my for my vassal. Now if I can fabricate if I can fabricate a, a claim on Dwasir, then I can fabricate through my vassal. If I can't, then I'll have to maybe see what I can do about getting my vassals to do that. I don't know how to get I think I think you can fabricate through your vassal. I don't remember. Okay, we got full friendship with the Rasid. With the Rashids. Um, now, their hatred of me will, you know, there's like, they, they force vassalized us, the um, aggressive expansion, all these things, you know, they're a little, they're a little bit upset with me. So it'll take, it'll take a bit of time before they're, they're really truly, um, you know, welcoming. But our trust should increase over time. Uh, I'm not going to do anything to hurt them, and they're a handy little vassal to have. Have they paid off their debts? No, they're struggling. Why is your monthly balance so low? Are you going bankrupt or something? Let's see. You're maintaining a fort. You should not be maintaining a fort. Tempted to place my relative on the throne, that could be fun. Yeah, you guys should not be maintaining a fort. I don't know what the hell you guys are doing. Alright, you can just run your crunchy into the ground, you're welcome to do that. Feel free. Feel free to be useless. All you're, all you're there for is me to farm tax from you. Uh, yeah, I don't even think this is a contest. Gain one corruption every time. Okay, I need to do this here. Take 46, 45 months. My units are well trained now. We should be able to make good use of these. Too bad the uh, the drill modifier only really applies for the first like battle or two of the war. After that, it doesn't really make a huge difference. But it is nice. It is a nice little thing that they've added into the game. Okay, how long now until we hit our thing? I'd say we're not too far away from it. Our truce has ended. Okay. Ah, Austria has gotten Renaissance. So let me have a look here. How is the Renaissance spreading? Okay, well, the Ottomans are getting it fairly quickly. And um, we're going to be pushing our way up into Europe if we can. Again, I want to I want to unite Arabia. That's my goal. The Arabian Peninsula. 
So unfortunately, Adal and Hadramut are friends. Um, I lost some development somehow. Oh, my, my, my tech cost reduced it. Okay, the merchant guilds will gain some influence. You know what I'm going to do? Actually, this center of trade, I think I'm going to give it to the merchant guilds. Because this will give me a plus 50%... Uh, local trade power, which is fairly high. That's an extra six trade power here. Now, it does mean I get more autonomy in here, but it doesn't affect the local production efficiency, the local trade power, the local force limit for Navy, or the local sailors. So I think, even though it will cut down on my total income a little bit, the trade power, I think, is worth it long term. If we watch this number... Yeah, that jumped a little bit. So I think that was worth it. I think that was worth it, especially now that we're pulling, like, more trade power is always good, right? I don't know how good it is, but it just, it's always good. And if I got a local marketplace here, that would be really good. But I feel like I would be wasting this um, cheaper build cost bonus if I did that, when I could get probably similar value here. I'll build it in Dam... Dam I'll build it in Damar. Because it is, it is a fairly significant boost to tax income. And it'll pay itself off over the course of the game. The sooner we get it, the better. And all that sort of stuff. You've influenced Genoa. Okay, we're very, very close to our maximum manpower. Which should give us this mission. And then we can get ready to declare our war on Duasir. So what provinces... I can only fabricate on Bishash... That's not good. I thought I could I thought I could fabricate through my vassals. But that must be like I must be mistaking that feature. How the hell do I get my vassals to fabricate claims? That's a good question. Oh well, I have a little vassal here anyway. He'll provide me extra money when I click this button over here. Boop. And I'll be able to diplo annex him later. Okay, we got recovering economy. There we go. Nice little bit of a national unrest and a national tax modifier. Nice little boost here. Uh, I don't want to incorporate the Rashids yet. I will do... I will do improve relations with Hadramut. Where is Hadramut? Okay, there's no reason not to improve relations here. Okay, this guy's idle. He's set to target my allies, so I'll actually switch him now. I'll set him to just switch my... to just, like, neighboring people. Just go, like, be friends with neighbors. Okay, let's uh, fabricate a claim here on Bishash. And I believe... I feel confident now that I can support a little... a slightly bigger army. Where's my force limit coming from, out of curiosity? Because that's... it feels like I have a lot. So some of it is coming from the vassalization of the Rashids. Okay, that's to be expected. So we're going to take another infantry here. I need to know, how many how many soldiers do you have, Duasir? Let's go into the ledger here. Look at armies. We will look at rivals. No, we will look at war enemies. Who are you? I wish you could just click on a thing and it would pop up here. So... We need to go by D. Uh, Dawasir. They have... Oh, they have like no army. Oh, hell yeah. Now is the time to strike. Who's your ally, Hormones? What kind of army... What kind of shape is your army in, Hormones? Oh my god, they're, they've been brutalized. It's like the perfect moment to strike. And they're in a war. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. She's a beauty. All right, pull you back. We will declare the war here. <clears throat> here. Um, Adal will come. I don't think I need... I don't think I need anyone to come to this war. And the good news is that moves us even further towards uh, mysticism. So I'll drop one troop behind. And then I'll catch them this way. 
Oh hell yeah, they're looking forward to a fight in this forded province. Thanks. Completely obliterated. Oh, nagged. What kind of claims have you got? Nothing crazy. Damn it, they got to the capital first. Let's do a little search around here, see if we can find a spot to uh, plant our flag. I want to move towards mysticism still. I think mysticism is better when you have provinces to convert and legalism is better when you don't have provinces to convert, in my opinion, because the missionary strength is just so nice, in the early game at least. The, I, I do really like the national manpower modifier and the national tax modifier, that is really nice, and the tech cost, that is something we want to take advantage of later. But for now, while our tech penalty is quite low, I think I'm going to stick to mysticism and just get our land, get rid of these, get rid of the Shias and we'll... Uh, We'll be in better shape when it comes to improving uh, our empire. Oh, I have a I have a unit over here. Oh wow, really? I detached a siege, and then you must have like taken attrition or something. Interesting. Are you losing more men than you're re regenerating? You are. Interesting. Alright, let's get another guy over there. I mean, we siege that down. So who are you at war with? Oh my god. Ugh. Well, we get, we, we're going to nab another province. I'm really upset that Adal allied Hadramut. Um, let's go in here to my diplomacy here, and I'm going to set these all to be my my desired provinces. The Mamluks will be upset with me because I desire their provinces. But... I've let people know what I want. I could also jump across the water here. Hmm, maybe not. Take a few bites out of the Mamluks, perhaps? So, unfortunately, I didn't get to their capital in time, so... These guys are going to get the siege down on the cap, which is fine. It just means my, I'll have to sit at war for a while. Would you just give me the province? No. Can I seize provinces at war, interestingly? I can. Ooh. Interesting. I'm tempted to take this province. Ah, there we go. Excellent. Because you have cores and claims that I could press. I'm tempted to take this province vassalize you and then use your cores to go to war with this guy go to war with Najd get Medina on my side see if I can figure something out there yeah I might vassalize this guy how many relationship slots do I have hmm I definitely want to keep Adal. That's the problem here. The vassalization poses an issue. How long until I can annex you guys? In three years, but I would need to have more, um, more relation with you. In three years, that just will not be enough.
You don't even have any siege pips, do you? You do. But we'll just leave three three units there to siege that down. Uh, I think I'll take this province and I'll vassalize them and then just accept the negative one um, thingy. If I stick a if I stick someone in here like a diplo rep guy, that could do the trick. Uh huh. All right. So I'll enact a taxation policy here. This will get me twenty four ducats and a fifteen percent tax modifier for the uh, next twenty years. Excellent. Excellent. Twenty five ducats. I'm absolutely ecstatic about that. I think I've basically won this war, so I feel confident in my ability to just throw down a marketplace here. Yeah, I'll throw down a marketplace. But don't forget, I'm spending a little bit of my money on rooting out corruption, which is definitely hurting me a bit. Um... But that's fine. That's not a big deal. Okay, we breached the walls of their capital fort. So that'll come down nice and quick. And uh, I spent all my money, but I felt confident doing it because of the position I'm in. I'm feeling very secure and uh, unhappy in my position. How do I get another diplomatic relation? Okay, there it is. What I could now I could like What I think I will do is I'll take the province. I will end their rivalry and vassalize them and take all their money. That'll give me a bunch of these things. Now, I will be over my vassal, I will be over my diplomatic limit, but that's fine. If I take them as my vassal, they will have cores and claims over here that I can use to continue to expand. So I think this is a reasonable move. It will put me over my diplo limit. And it will mean I have a disloyal vassal. But what I'll just do is I'll get a one of my guys here. Okay, I'm improving relations with Hadramut. But I'm just going to improve relations with you for a while. On the 16th of April we can send him. Yeah, being over my, my limit here is not ideal. Okay, we'll improve relations here. If I were to break relations with anyone, it would be Mara. Because I don't think they do a whole lot for me right now. Now, now that I have vassals and stuff, um, I also, actually, breaking relations with Medina could be worthwhile too. If I'm looking to declare war on Najd. These guys are in a war, which actually could potentially put me in perfect timing to recover this guy's territory, his cores over here. Um... I would want to seize I would want to seize a province off them if I were doing that. Because they would get kind of big for me. So I need to be careful about them getting too big. Um yeah, it's probably going to be breaking the royal marriage with Medina here, depending on how the war goes. Either Mara or Medina. I want to keep Adon, Adal on my side. But I tell you what, I'm going to do. I'm going to end the. I'm going to end the episode here, and we're going to we're going to kind of think about what we're going to do next. I think we're in a good position now. Being over our diplomatic limit is not a good position, but we can recover from that. Anyway, I just want to say I love you all very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.